Okay. Good morning again. Thank you for joining us today for the launch of Sakati's Roaring Library. I'm Sakati's General Manager, CEO Henry Nee. And first, I want to uh, introduce or acknowledge uh, some uh, prominent elected officials in this region here. Uh -oh. That certainly, first, you know, our beloved Congresswoman, uh, our Congresswoman uh, Marisui is here. Yeah. And uh, yeah. then our Library Board Chair, uh, Garrett uh, Gatewood here. Right, okay. right there, yeah. Hey, hey. Uh, our library director, board director, Erica Gora is here. Yeah. Our library director, board director, Sue Frost is here too. Yeah. <laughs> Did we miss any directors from library? Okay, okay. Uh, so, so let me just introduce first, you know, Sakati Board Chair Stephen Miller, yeah, and uh, Sakati's Vice Chair Patrick Kennedy. Now uh, is Sakati's the longest term board director. So, and uh, that's why I want to put him into the Sakati Board category, not library. <laughs> Yeah, thank you for your leadership, Dan. Then we have uh, uh, our uh, board director, Katie Maraswana, here. Thank you. Uh, did I miss anybody? No. <laughs> OK. As you can see from you know, this side, the brightly decorated library of train promotes writing and uh, reading. This is the first time the interior of our library train has been completely reimagined with a host of interactive resources, interactive resources available to our riders at their fingertips. I want to thank the Sacramento Public Library, its board of directors, and its CEO, Peter Coy. Peter? Uh -huh. Wow, Peter! <laughs> For this outstanding collaboration that I believe will be well received by millions, millions of our writers. Allow me to begin our program by first thanking our Congresswoman Matsui for joining us this morning. Woo! She is, uh, she as an extraordinary leader and a tireless champion for the Sacramento region, not only assisting our communities with buildings, actually buildings of dollars, COVID relief funds. Sakati alone received $240 million. I think the county received half a billion dollars. Yeah. And imagine, you know, city, I think, the city of Sac received about $250 million. Yeah. million dollars. That three organizations received more than one building. And uh, if we really think about that's so people may not really put everything together. Uh, Congresswoman also understands our nation needs bold investments in public transportation to tackle climate change, advance equity and economic development, and provide our communities with robust and sustainable mobility options. And she also was instrumental in the passage of the historical bipartisan infrastructure law last winter, which provides hundreds of billion dollars. We talk about the locally more than a billion nationwide is 1.2 trillion dollars uh, transformational investment in public transportation infrastructure that our nation so desperately needs. Congresswoman, we're truly honored to have you join us today. 
and thank you for all you do on behalf of this region and, uh, and everything you did for the nation. Yeah. Thank you. Let invite Congresswoman to the podium. Hear me? You probably can't. No. Can't hear me. We can hear you. You know what? I'm just gonna yeah. come out of here. Okay. Okay. You know what? This is probably a reason to really. Oh my gosh. To cut it short, right? As far as the speeches and all. But let me just say thank you very much, Henry. Thank you much, very much, RT team. Thank you very much for my colleagues who are here. Thank you very much for the Library Association. I mean, the libraries are such a wonderful part of the community. And I'm so happy to be here with all of you because to talk about probably my two favorite things in the community, RT and also the libraries. And Henry mentioned the bipartisan infrastructure bill, which was really critical as you think about what it means to Sacramento. Not only we're thinking about transportation and what RT has gained from it, because we have the biggest investment in transit in that bipartisan bill in, in history. And also, too, because we also have broadband access in there, which is really critical for the libraries and the schools and homes. But in particular, I'm talking about now the library, which is really so critical during the pandemic, having the ability to have people even just sit in their parking lots in order to get Wi-Fi. But what's important here is, is that we are bringing together RT that connects communities in Sacramento for work and play homes. And then we're also connecting the library in a sense that provides knowledge and information and resources. So we're putting this together in a really imaginative way with RT the buses here. So we really now have a combination of this because this is, what are we calling it now? The, the uh, reading train, is that what we're doing now? What is the proper title for this? The library train. So as people go on these buses, and in particular during this season of the school starting out during this region, they'll be able to access in a very imaginative way to get on the train and access by QR codes. And this is the fabulous way of today. I love books and things like that, but you know, in today's world, it really is how we access information, and now it's through technology. So we're gonna have the QR codes. We're gonna walk into this library train and see a library there. And it's going to be very imaginative in how we access this. Young people in particular are much more facile with technology than any of us. And so we're going to learn from them. And when we get on the train, too, we can probably learn an awful lot, too. But what I want to say here today is, is that putting together two successful institutions who work so well with the rest of the community, but now putting them together to ensure that young people in particular get access to reading. And that's really what it's all about because as we grew up, we knew how important it was to have the library in your community, to be able to get there and have a safe place. We're doing this now, the library train, so that young people can access books, audio books, even movies, research, they can do that by using the QR codes. I am so happy to be here celebrating with all of you because it's, to me, an inspirational innovation that RT and the library system has come up with. It is not only something that is a connection, a physical connection, but also a technical con connection to knowledge and information. And I believe as you go into this, you'll realize that the library has many other resources that you can download and get connections to, too. And that really is now, the library is a center of a community now. And we're bringing that, the connection uh, from all over the region to 
through the library. So I want to thank you all for doing this. It's really inspirational. And I will say this, we have wonderful elected officials in this region, local elected officials who understand what is important for people in their communities. And that's the success of Sacramento, the collaboration, the inspiration to see where the needs are and to put them all together. So I want to thank you all very much for being a part of this. And I also want to compliment our new library director for being here also. Uh, because, you know, he brought ideas from other parts of the country, and I think we all need that fresh infusion also. But at this point, I want uh, to continue this conversation by bringing up our wonderful director, right, chairman of RT. Would you come up here, Steve Miller? Who is, who is really dressed the way he should be dressed, right? That's right. That's I learned from experience. Well, thank you. Uh, Congresswoman, uh, we are truly honored. Music. I was told not to touch these. <laughs> A special surprise for the end. So about five years ago, Regional Transit started using uh, the RAP program as a way to increase the uh, uh, revenue and improve the exterior condition of our aging trains. It was a lot cheaper than, uh, than painting them. And our original fleet is now 35 years old. But don't worry, Siemens is building a, a whole fleet of low floor light rail vehicles as we speak Yay. here in Sacramento. The RAP program has been successful in its, uh, its original goals, but today we are taking a step forward by completely transforming a car inside and out with interactive educational material. I want to thank the Sacramento Public Library for working with our RT staff and thank you to our staff to launch this rolling library train. I think the only thing better would be a uh, train full of puppies. <laughs> Just my idea. This is a great way to make transit fun and to make a trip on your train relaxing and enjoyable. Whether it's an educational video, a movie or an audio book, writers will have numerous options for how they want to enjoy their ride along the rolling library train. And, Answer your question, I guess that's what we're calling it. <laughs> the rolling library train. SACRT has strengthened and forged new partnerships in recent years, including Wi-Fi bus deployment partnerships with our school districts, food delivery, and much more. The rolling library builds upon these meaningful partnerships with a valued community partner and a way we can connect our riders and the entire community with important amenities in our area. Please check our website for special webpage dedicated to how riders can access a SACRT to visit library locations throughout Sacramento County. I'm excited to see this train traversing through our system, and I really think the community will enjoy this. And now, I'd like to introduce my fellow board member, SACRT Vice Chair, and Sacramento County Supervisor, and all-around nice guy, Patrick Kennedy, for a few words. Thank you for that, Steve. I uh, appreciate the kind words, though I heard none of them. Um, <laughs> I, I want to thank everybody for being out here today, and thanks for this partnership. You know, most people don't realize, and as a member of the Sacramento RT Board, but also a member of the, the Library Board, uh, this is particularly exciting to see these two great organizations coming together and serving our community the way that this program will. Most people don't realize that at the library, uh, it's not your father's library. Uh, the, the library now that you see today, you can go into and you can check out not only books and magazines and, and movies that you, you're used to, but you can check out baking equipment. You can check out gardening equipment. There's all kinds of, you can check out GoPro cameras, which I didn't know. And so I couldn't work it anyway. So it, it's, it's actually, this is a great partnership between two organizations that are looking far beyond what their traditional role is as a transit agency and as a library to do something that's special. Speaking of going beyond what a transit agency does, it's just been a few years since Sacramento RT has actually offered free rides for all students K through 12 throughout the county of Sacramento. Now, this is an awesome opportunity for kids to get to school, particularly those in lower income families who need that help and that assistance. But it's also, it's completely changed absenteeism in our school districts. 
and we are creating lifelong transit riders with a 127% increase in that age population since we offered free rides. These are kids that will grow up as transit riders, stay as transit riders, and that's what we need for this system to be successful. That's what we need to do to clean our air. Now on these trains that you see here that I'm looking forward to riding on, on my regular commute into the office, uh, the trains that you see here are not just wrapped with library logo, but if you go inside, you'll find QR codes where you can download movies, you can download books, you can find out what classes are available at the library. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm run, gonna run the risk of missing my stops when I get on here, because I'm gonna be so tied up in reading and watching movies. But this is a great opportunity. I wanna thank the library uh, staff. I wanna take, thank SAC RT staff for making all of the electeds that are here today look good, frankly, because we can't do it without this forward-thinking staffs that we have that are serving our community every day. So thank you very much for having me here. And with that, I want to introduce the public library director, Peter Coyle. And, and I have to tell you, Peter you know, is fairly new to the job. I had to look his name up because even though I'm a library board member, this is the first time I've seen him when he wasn't on a three by three box on my computer. So thank you for being here, Peter. Peter. Thank you, sir. appreciate it. Good afternoon, friends. Thanks for being here. And thank you, SACRT, for joining us in this partnership, or rather inviting the library to be part of this partnership. A lot of great things have been said about the library services, um, and I think that the key is that SACRT and the library have a very similar mission, and that mission is to get people uh, to where they need to go, whether that's physically or intellectually. And our hope is that people will ride these trains and learn more about the library services and understand that they can uh, take their life where they want to go. You can, uh, with the QR codes on these trains, learn about library services, like our career online high school, where you can learn, earn your high school equivalency diploma for free. It's a great partnership we have with the state library. And you can also, as has been mentioned, download books, magazines, and a host of other things. Like trains, books can take your imagination anywhere you want to go, and removing that barrier of access is key to the mission of the library. So we're very pleased to be part of this uh, endeavor to help people understand what the library can do, but also get people where they need to go. This train will be a great resource and a service to help people access the information they need. And reading while writing is a great way to learn something new, provide a positive experience for our users, and fire up the imagination and nurture a lifelong love of reading and learning. Our goal at the library is to inspire our diverse community to come together, to learn and grow, and we can do that by bringing people together at the library and on the trains. So we are excited to be part of this, and we want to thank everyone for being here today and appreciate the great partnership that we've embarked on with SACRT. And as it's pretty warm, I'm going to end and have <laughs> Councilwoman Valenzuela come up here and say some few words. Thanks, and Peter has really taken this job by storm, hasn't he? Um, so hi everybody, my name is Katie Valenzuela. I'm a city council member in downtown Sacramento and a proud director on the Sacramento Regional Transit Board. And when I think about the things that I want every constituent in my district and across the city to have access to, two of those things are public transit and libraries. And this is such an amazing, innovative idea to make sure that we're bringing those two essential community services together, that we're increasing access for all of those students who ride. That program started with the city of Sacramento, and this is the first year that all seven jurisdictions within RT service territory are giving students free passes to get on these trains, to get where they need to go, and now to be able to access our amazing library system. So I'm really excited to see this. I can't wait to see this driving around my district in downtown Sacramento, and I'm really excited and want to applaud all of the staff from RT, from the library, and all of the board members here today who helped make this happen. And of course, to our Congresswoman for her undying and unending support for these essential community services. So thank you so much for having me here today, and I will keep it super short as well, and introduce our Mayor Pro Tem and library board member and immediate past chair, Eric Guerra. Well, let's hear it for our public library and RT.
It's a, I get to close up because we feel the heat, yeah. and I also am the chair of the Sacramento Air Quality Management District. And if this isn't an example of why we what we need to do, standing next to a boulevard that is congested, next to the light rail where we need to read, and trying to address our climate change issues, this right now is an example of what partnership is about. Now, the uh, the library authority, I want to thank Peter Coyle and all our big library staff, started off with three electric bookmobiles to try to get libraries and access to people uh, into the hands of areas where we didn't have them. And that was an amazing step forward for our clean air and for literacy. So let's give a big round of applause to our library staff for, for that effort. That was a partnership with the Air District, but what a better partnership with Regional Transit, our library authority, to making sure that, that when they ride, they read. So, and we want kids that when they ride, they read, and when they get home, they're just going to read. And the unfortunate part about our literacy issues is there are so many kids, particularly in South Sacramento, in this area, who read below the third grade level. And that means that they're going to fall behind in school. Their income is going to fall behind. Their outcomes in life are going to fall behind. We will change that by partnerships together, by leadership like with folks and leaders like Congresswoman Doris Matsu. A big round of applause again for the Congresswoman on that effort. And by making sure that, that when kids ride, they read. So with that, si se puede, let's ride, let's read.